Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about Montessori prepared environment at home, specifically about Indian homes, because there'll be a lot of other factors that come into picture like space constraints or joint family, there'll be other family members in the house. Um, so well, this prepared environment is all about the order, the beauty, the accessibility to real environment, to real things. It's all about prepared environment. So I will explain this concept in a simple and easy way. I'll break down it into different you know, structures and I'll show the examples of my own house on how I have set up my home without having to spend too much, without having to um, yeah, invest too much or uh, taking into account that you don't have to give everything to your child uh, because even we live there because there will be other family members around the house and how you can do your best with whatever you have and how we can absolutely set up this prepared environment, Montessori prepared environment uh, without having a too much of fuss. Number one, living room or if you have any play areas then well and good you could set up their shelf or any activities in that particular room. So for most of us we use living room as your play area so in living room we usually keep this Montessori shelves. One, less toys, less is more always and keep it organized. Children love order and they love to see it organized and that will be more approaching for them and more inviting for them. And then keep rotating the to toys based on their interest and based on their development milestones. So I'll not talk much about this shelves and as most of you will be aware of what this Montessori shelves. And next is a separate area for uh, books. You could have a separate bookshelf or a small ba basket and you could keep some of the books there and keep rotating the books if they're not interested in that particular books. Let's move ahead beyond shelf what we call it as. Let's see what's there beyond shelf and how we could prepare an environment. You could keep a small mat in front of the shelf. So normally these mats are used in Montessori, even schools as well. So that provides a, a boundary for a child so that a child knows that his or her toy shouldn't go out of that mat and that mat is specifically for that particular child uh, and it acts as a play area and a play boundary. So this one you could start as early as you can and when you come to mat uh, more, it should be mostly of plain color there should not be any you know print or distraction in the mat because when you keep an activity in the ch uh, on that mat say for example a puzzle uh, that could distract a child so normally we choose a plain mat in front of the uh, shelves you could keep a mat or uh, without mat is also fine this is one of the option uh, where you could bring a sense of the boundary for a child a chair and a table where they could go and do their artwork or language work or unit studies, any pouring activity that, that could be used for multiple activities but keeping a chair and table that, that helps them to you know sit in one place and perform their activity early as possible. I've kept a small jug and a glass here so whenever my son is thirsty he's going to come here and then he will pour the water to the glass and drink all by himself and sometimes I keep a snack here to munch on. So if there is any spill then this is a cloth to wipe. I've also kept a dustbin. It's, it's, it's just a small dabba and then this is a brush and a pan. So if there is any uh, waste or any kind of paper or plastic here and there then he is going to brush it and put it inside the dustbin. Now let's talk about Montessori entryway. So by the name itself we could say that it's something that's going to be near the main door or the entry of the house. Yeah. So in most of the western countries where they have the extreme weather conditions they'll have to layer up a lot of clothes. They'll have uh, jackets and sweaters and boots. So what they do is they'll have a separate space for that. They'll have some hooks where they could hook up the, uh, their jackets and separate drawers for socks and mittens and then they'll have a box for boots, a separate mirror where they could, they could see and dress up themselves. But here in India in most parts of India we do not have that extreme condi climatic conditions where we have to layer up a lot of clothes um, maybe a socks or a shoe shoes yes and some sweaters or a cap or mask at this this point in time and we don't even step step out a lot during this pandemic right 
so what i am doing is shoes yes just like any other most of the indian house we do not allow shoes inside it's kept outside so whenever i go up we go out um it's there uh, on his reach and he can take it and put on himself but he's still not developmentally ready to put on so now the scaffolding is going on sometimes he tries to put and he needs my help to put on his shoes coming back to the other items like sweaters sometimes or cap and mask i have kept a separate space for him let me show that so we have a small cupboard here where we keep some of the bags when we go out and this is a place for him here he has kept his sweater and uh, usually we keep the cap and socks here as well he has gone out so there is no cap and socks here so you could keep any small baskets if you don't have a cupboard but just that it should be uh, on your child's level eye level the idea behind this entryway or a separate space is whenever you go out step out of your house or come back to your home your child should know where to keep back the things or from where to take those things all by themselves so i keep this a uh, mask and cap and sweater here so whenever he needs it he'll come here and he'll take it and though they're not able to develop until ready to put on them by themselves at least they could start practicing from taking from that place and keeping back to that place bedroom most of the montessori homes prefer for floor bed you could also go for low hung crib if your child is small and then you could transition to floor bed and then to normal high cot and um if you have a cupboard where you keep clothes then a separate space for them in the cupboard which is accessible for them so they they are free to choose what they want to wear and slowly you can involve them in folding the clothes and then keeping back in their shelves and if there is any wardrobe or a mirror or a dressing table keep their uh, hair brush or whatever their items separately and accessible at least brushing hair we could start early for toddlers as well you could keep a small step stool or normal stool uh, that should be in a height that your child should be able to turn on the tap by themselves and there is a mirror that should be in a proper eye level for them and if your child is able to put on their own toothpaste on their brush then well and good you could keep that as well accessible for them uh, keeping that mirror is really important you know that that promotes a better uh, brushing habit and at least one of the family member should be brushing their teeth along with your uh, if you have a toddler okay and if you are helping them it's important that one of them should be there this was brushing area potty area if you're potty training your child then a potty seater any kind of potty seater so no, i'm not going to recommend any here and then this is important i have placed a clip and a face towel here so once is done with brushing and wa washing his face he'll come here and take this towel wipe his face and keep him keep it back so that should be in a reach and then bathing area a tub or a bucket mug and a tap next is a kitchen so that is where your child will get most of the practical life activities right so if you have an younger child uh, you could go for learning tower or kitchen towers i've come across some of the kitchen towers which is convertible you could convert them to um, feeding table and you could convert them as a easel chair or something of that sort i don't have it but i've come across one such thing and um or you could go for normal step stools or a stool so that anything that that is you could child could climb up and that is accessible for your child you could involve them in the kitchen activities um while well, when you cut or when you clean vegetables when you sort out things so you could involve them in the practical activities or you could keep a separate cabinet or a drawer which is in the low level for your child you could keep some of the cutlery uh, you could keep some the bowl and plates spoons maybe if your child is a bit older a knife or a tray for them to cut so that whenever your child is coming and pulling the drawer you don't have to say that no no don't touch that don't touch this you don't have to say that so they they know that they have something for them as well they feel good about it they feel uh, so happy that even they have freedom to choose they even they have freedom to work just like others other elders in the house so you could keep a separate cabinet in the kitchen you could go for learning uh, tower or a step stool also we'll do i use step stool and then coming to dining you have um meal tables booster chairs high chairs so if you're going for high chair make sure that uh, you have 
a space in a high chair where your child could keep his or her leg on the uh, there's a footrest basically and involve your child in you know serving the food involve your child in helping you preparing the table taking back the things once they are done with the food help them to or encourage them to take their own place and put back in the sink to wash if a child is a bit older encourage them to wash and clean their own place and keep it back in shelf and once the vessels are dry encourage them again to keep it back in the place where it is so these are all you know not only a good independent life skill but as well as it there is a lot of gross motor and fine motor skill that is going on and kitchen is the best place for all of the life skill activities or practical activities and yeah so if you don't have a learning tower so once they are done with their meal time in their inner dining room if you have a separate sink space for them to wash hands again normally what i do is i keep the same the dining table the chair that we have i keep near the sink so that he can go and climb and wash his own hand and then again the same clip and the hand towel the similar one that i kept on the bathroom you could keep a similar one in in the dining area once they wash their hand they can get down and wipe their own ha hand as well this was all about a prepared environment wasn't it simple Yes, you always need not spend too much, invest too much or worry that there is no space and uh, modify your house too much, right? So when I talked about space, I just remembered one thing. So we had this living room in our house where we had a sofa and there, there were two foldable chairs and two more fiber chairs. So what? now that we have a growing toddler and he needs some extra space to move about, so what we did is the foldable chair, anyways, we could fold it. And now that it's pandemic, though not not much guests come to our house. But anyways, have a sofa there. So the foldable chair we kept it aside. The other two fiber chairs we just put it on the veranda out in the balcony. So we got a space of four chairs. So that is really, uh, you know, some achievement for us, right? So those are the simple modification that you could make, especially in the living area. So if you if your child is spending too much time, then if you have a toddler who loves to move around, then you could make a small here modification here and there. You could move some of the furniture to your bedroom, or if you have any foldable ones, you could fold and keep it up. Little step that you could uh, make to make your child happy and friendly, and that's something that you could do for his development, right? Some Montessori homes uh, prefer to keep a large mirror in the living room as well or the play area. So we, just that we are giving an opportunity for a child to explore their body, their movement when they are doing any work, when they are dancing, they are moving around, when they are doing an activity. You know, they, they want to see how their body looks. So you could still go ahead and keep it. We have anyways uh, a mirror in the bedroom and most of the Indian homes do vast two reasons we are not allowed to keep some in the living room but if you are uh, fine with this you could still go and keep a large mirror in the living room when you have other family members or when you are living in a joint family space constraint yes definitely we have talked about it how you could manage it here and there but if you have other family members who come and interrupt your child's work try to not not to let them uh, do their work independently of course we have to understand that they come from a different generation then they do it out of love and again we have to follow the same we have to do it out of love again we need to try and convince them talk to them and show them you could show the videos of other children like how how it works how it's going to happen so when your child is initially learning to pour uh, water from pitcher to glass he might spill so if you see come across any video show it to them and tell them that this is how it is this is how the present generation it's going to be a competitive world it's uh, it's going to be emotionally stressful world going forward for a child and we need to prepare a child for that to be independent to be strong willed to to learn to say no to do on their own to be happy and contented with their own work without expectation right talk to them and try to make them understand this i'm sure most of them will understand so this was all about Montessori prepared environment at home at Indian homes. Yeah, until I come back with another video. Bye. -bye.